Hey guys, welcome to Titanium Tuesdays on Propelio TV. I'm your host, RJ Bates. Today I'm sitting down with THE Donovan Ruffin. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Hello, world. Yeah, so today we're going to chit-chat about marketing strategies, doing deals in multiple markets. You're in, what, DFW, San Antonio, and South Florida? Yeah, three markets right now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Also, we want to keep this interactive. We want to answer all of y'all's questions that y'all have for Donovan or for myself today. So uh, the more questions, the better. Uh, love to get everybody interacted and then help us out with today's episode. So let's jump into you are kind of semi-famous for... Uh, <laughs> no for bandit signs oh for bandit signs yeah and yeah I, I consider myself the bandit sign king yeah yeah so how many bandit signs are y'all dropping on like a weekly basis right now um i would say probably about 500 minimum that's kind of like the minimum standards um sometimes my guys like to make some extra bucks so they put maybe a thousand out um but we have a minimum standard of at least two thousand a month so how is that working are you obviously you have guys going out and doing that yeah Mm -hmm. How are, walk us through the process for everybody that's watching and they want to learn how to do bandit signs. Yeah. What does your system look like on how y'all do that? Um, well, I've, I've kind of built out a little team that's been with me for a couple years. Um, and I mean, they want to make some extra money on the weekends. And uh, essentially, I order the signs directly from the facility, it goes directly to their house. Um, so I probably never even see the signs. And then on Fridays, they're, they're teamed up with uh, the. Um, the Simple Crew app, and then they just go out and lay them out. And are these pre-printed or do they they're pre-printed? Yeah, they're, they're pre-printed. Pre yeah. Have you split tested like between the pre-printed and writing on them, or did I, you I always have. just go pre-printed? I have. Um, it's just it takes time, you know. Um, and we we see it's like we might get less calls, but we can do more um, by just spending a couple extra bucks and just getting them printed, so it saves time. Gotcha. Because I mean, at this, I mean, you get to a point in business where time is more important than than actual couple bucks, you know right. what I mean, so. So, Tang Nguyen says he's uh, jelly of all that beard action. The beard action. <laughs> Which, I mean, I'm just gonna be honest Look at with that. you, it's I mean, we are jealous of your hair, okay? Because combined between the two of us, we have like a quarter inch of hair on the top of our head, so. <laughs> uh, anyways, love you guys for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, we got Jeremiah, we got Jamie, um, all kinds of people, Yale joining in, so. Uh, please drop your all those questions on the comments there on the Facebook live feed. We definitely want to, uh, you know, get everybody interactive today, answer some questions. Donovan's taking time out of his day to be here, so we definitely want to get as much out of him as we can. Yeah. Uh, Ryan asks, uh, where are y'all investing? So mainly in DFW, right? Um, well, yeah, we do deals in DFW, Fort Worth, obviously, um, and then we do San Antonio and South Florida, Fort Lauderdale and Miami. And are you wholesaling, flipping? What are you doing in each of those markets? Both. Um, in Dallas, we're just, I mean, only in Dallas, we're doing rehabs. Um, and then everywhere else is just wholesaling. So, so when you get a lead that comes in, is that, oh, this is, you know, I get this question all the time from people ask me, you know, if you wholesale and you rehab, how do you make a determination of how many deals are you going to rehab? Is this a better one to wholesale? or to mm -hmm. keep, to flip? How are you making those determinations? Yeah, I mean, well, we, we stick to a basic criteria um, and our rehabs, it it probably, I mean, you could essentially like hotel them where it, they really don't need a lot of work, right. maybe just paint carpet. So turnkey rehabs, that's kind of like our criteria. So if it's doesn't need anything really like foundation, if the big three are good, then we consider it for a rehab. That's kind of the way we look at it. Gotcha. Yeah. And how are you handling the rehabs on those? Do you have internal crews? Or are you hiring out to general contractors? Yeah. What are you doing there? So I have internal crews. Um, uh, my brother and I teamed up, and he handles the subs. Um, and honestly, we've been we've been working with the same subs for years. So it's right. uh, it's it's pretty simple once you get a good team established and kind of treat them good and. Um, they kind of stay loyal to you just like you stay loyal to them. And, so my good yeah. buddy Luis has a question for you. He yeah. says, uh, how did you start your team and what can we do to grow in the same footsteps as you? Um, well, I think with the perspective of um, how you can add value to somebody and they can add value to you, um, essentially you, you bring each other value um, and you kind of look at it from a standpoint of where you need help um, so you can duplicate yourself. Um, because it, it gets to a point, it's just like, if you want to grow in business, you have to uh, 
um, have more free time to, to learn different avenues or to dedicate more time to, which means you need somebody else to work what you're working right now, you know? Right. So like, I mean, even for you or anybody, um, what are you doing every day that costs time? Yep. Um, and you kind of look at it, how can I replace myself? Um, and put somebody else in the seat so I can go into a different seat. Yep. And then you continue to do that, and that's kind of how you, that's the way a team should be structured, but. Yeah. So you, Bandit Signs is a huge f part of your business. Mm -hmm. You have the, the guys, you're shipping directly to them, they get the signs. Yep. They have an app that they're using that proves that they're placing the Bandit sign to you. Yep. How are they determining where they're placing the bandit signs though? Um, well, we do like 10 per zip code. Uh, we, we typically like to stay outside of main intersections. It's, I mean, it's pretty standard um, procedure with bandit signs. Um, and everybody always like, it's like bandit signs is not the way to go. Bandit signs is the way to go. Uh, we do a lot of volume with bandit signs and we're also very consistent with it and that's mixed with the biggest difference. There's some weeks we don't get any calls, some weeks we get a lot of calls. We just have to stay consistent with it, so. So are you using call rail to track the phone numbers? Or yeah. how, okay, so yeah. you use call rail. Are you tracking each individual person signs with a different call rail number? Or no. is it just the? It's just the whole. The, the whole campaign. Yeah, the whole campaign. Right. Because my guys aren't compensated by their signs. They're compensated per sign in the ground, so it doesn't make a difference. And who's doing the lead intake on those calls? Um, it, well, it goes to one of my acquisitions. So specifically yeah. the acquisitions person. And when those calls come in, are they setting appointments or are they trying to make offers right there on the phone? We make it over the phone. Yeah. So why did you make that decision? I think that's a, that's a heated conversation between. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, because we, we essentially do all forms of marketing. So we get a lot of inbound leads, um, essentially, and we just physically don't have the time um, to be driving in traffic to go look at houses and make offers. Um, I guess having experience doing rehabs, you can kind of get a general idea um, of how much the construction cost is going to cost. Right. Um, so we're able to effectively make offers over the phone and essentially get the DocuSign sent and the contract signed straight from the office. Right. I think a lot of times, I mean, you can make that determination just based off the age of the house, yep. knowing the neighborhood, yep. ask it a couple of key points. Yep. I mean, if you're asking, when was the last time the floors were replaced? Yep. Have you ever remodeled the kitchen or bathroom? Suddenly you started getting a pretty good idea of a price per square foot of what yeah, the rehab yeah, should be. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it's, it, yeah, we ask, have a basic criteria of certain questions and then um, we essentially ask them how much they think it would, it'd be cost, or it would cost to fix. And I mean, if they get into an argument where it's like, yeah, it's only gonna cost X amount, it's like, okay, we believe you. And then we're still gonna do an inspection. Right. And it's like, hey, you told us it was gonna be 15 and like clearly it's, that's impossible. So right. we need it cheaper. So. so we got a question here. Do you see a saturation in the market with bandit signs in terms of competition? Um, I, I don't believe in saturation just because, I mean, there's millions of people in, in Dallas, you know, so it's, I mean, there's deals for everybody. Do um, you all avoid uh, like the corners where there's already like four or five bandit signs already there? Um, I tell my guys to just l place it right next to the other person's sign because, I mean, think about it. If somebody's going to take a picture of that sign or call that one sign, they're going to call all of them. Right. Um, and then it gets down to the point where who's who's the better closer. Right. It's so, about execution at that point. Exactly. In time. Right. So uh, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, um, if you've ever just driven the streets and taken pictures of bandit signs and called. Yep. I mean, nine times out of ten, yeah. they don't even answer the phone. Or they don't know what to do. Like, right. It's, it, I mean. And a lot of times, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it is. they want to yeah. know, you know, sometimes there are bandit signs where they're trying to get cash buyers compared to yep. actually handing a motivated seller. And it's. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. So, yeah, sure. um, Jeremiah asks, do you use Simple Crew for bandit signs? Yes, I do. Yes. For the people that don't know what Simple Crew is, explain what that is. Uh, it's basically an app where it essentially tracks where uh, the sign is directly placed um, on a map and the time when it was placed. So, um, it kind of keeps your team accountable um, so they're not just throwing it away and collecting a paycheck and make sure that it's physically in place with the picture on a map of where the sign was placed with the time. So. For the people that are wanting to build out some kind of system for this, do you mind sharing how you compensate those people for placing yeah, bandit signs? Yeah, I, I mean, I pay anywhere from a dollar or two dollars, kind of depends um, on what somebody agrees to, to put them out, because you never know, it's just asking, it's like, hey, how much would you do this for? Right. Um, some people, it's like, I, I can do it for 50 cents a sign, you know, great, but um, essentially, I mean, we pay like two dollars a sign max, and um, I think that's pretty fair. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah. Dante asks, what is the cost of your marketing? 
So it sounds uh, like yeah. you do a lot of forms of marketing, not yeah. just on bandit um, signs. Last month we did about 140,000 in marketing. And that's across the three markets? Yeah, yeah. So are you also doing bandit signs and things along those lines in San Antonio and South Florida? No. What are you doing in those markets? Um, we do PPC, cold call, um, and mailers. So let's talk about cold calling because yeah. I see that being as, you know, a lot of people are moving towards that direction to yep. avoid the high cost of direct mail. Yeah, for um, sure. How are you building that out? Are you outsourcing the cold the calls to VAs or do you have an internal team doing that? Well, I have both. Um, I try to try to leverage it just because it's with with our in-house callers. Um, we have like three cold call in-house callers, and it's more of quality. Um, so, it, like the turnover is is a lot more efficient. Um, but we do outsource about 25 agents to VAs, um, and we we kind of play the volume game in all sorts of marketing uh, because yeah, it's it's the cheapest way to do it. But we don't look at it based off of the cheapest way, we just look at it as a form to, to bring leads into the door. So right. we, don't, we don't be cheap with it. We, we go all out um, with, with all forms so we can, there is no competition essentially. Right, and have you done the, like do you run the numbers where you see the difference in like a cost per deal mm -hmm. on bandit signs compared to cold calling? Yeah, cost per deal with bandit signs is probably double than what it is for cold calling. And so what, what is the reasoning behind you continuing to do a high volume of bandit signs compared to dumping that back into cold calling and doubling down on that effort? Well, it's just it's leveraging different a angles of marketing. Right. You know, we might get more deals or uh, more uh, dollars per deal with bandit signs, but right. we still get deals without me physically doing anything. So why not continue it and grow it? Right. It's also a part of you know. Cold calling might not work for a lead that you get off of exactly. bandit sign. Yeah, bandit sign leads are like home run leads every time. Right. So, and so just calling a bandit sign lead, they they want to sell. <laughs> right. You know. And on the San Antonio cold calling and the South Florida cold calling, mm -hmm. are you pulling the same list for those, or are you stacking the the list that you're pulling for the cold calling differently in those markets? Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of data research um, uh, before we go into a market and kind of find where the most cash transactions are happening because that's where people are buying um, and then we just buy the whole county gotcha. so it's not like we buy like a couple thousand we, we buy a couple hundred thousand right at a time because you you and <laughs> yeah. I were talking about this before we get jumped on here that each market kind of has its own little personality exactly yeah so you're experiencing yeah. in South Florida something completely different than what you're experiencing yeah. here in Texas like literally in South Florida we're we're reverse psychology it like we're I mean throwing dispositions on triple dialers finding buyers right um, just because we're getting deals by the hour in South Florida because it's it's a buyer's market there I mean that's what we see um, obviously it's, we're new to that market so right. maybe it's not we're just really aggressive compared to what everybody else so is doing. you're actually struggling getting rid of the deals yeah yeah because there's too much inventory yeah yeah which is crazy yeah. compared to what we're experiencing here in Texas yeah uh, but that might be something that we experience here in Texas here in the next couple of years yeah, so this is sure. a good experience for yep. you yeah, and I'm, I'm fortunate to be able to learn that. It's like, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? Um, I just have to, like, reverse psychology and fun, instead of focus on acquisitions, we focus on dispositions, and then when the market does shift, I already know how to do that in, in our main markets like Dallas. All right, guys. So. For everybody that's tuning in, love for you guys to jump in and, and ask some questions here. You know, obviously, you know, Donovan is, a, you know, doing a ton of bandit signs, cold calling, even uh, PPC. Um, so definitely drop any questions that you have about these different forms of marketing and or just rehabbing properties or wholesaling. Uh, Dante asks, what do you say to bandit sign pirates that harass y'all? <laughs> uh, I mean, we, we kind of like to have fun on the phone. Like if somebody's calling us to prank call or talk shit, then we just do the same back. So just right? have fun with it. You know, it's I, mean, I think that's it. that's not even just bandit signs though. Yeah, that's like anything. every form of marketing. Yeah, it's like if somebody's calling you to talk shit and they're taking time out of your day, we just talk shit back. It's right. It, I mean, go ahead. Let's. I mean, yeah. I, I think one of my favorite experiences with this was we did a direct mail campaign. Yeah. Overload of calls. I got a phone call, and I'm I'm so glad this phone call came to me. I was on the phone with the guy for a good ten or twelve minutes. Yeah. And I mean, he's walking me down. You know. Property's older, mm -hmm. slightly distressed, could do some remodeling. I'm motivated to sell if the price is right. I mean, we're, we're walking down the path, and yeah. the whole time I'm not at my computer yet, so I'm just asking the questions. Finally, I get to my computer, I'm like, all right, sir, what's your address? He gives me the address, I pull it up, 
and just on Zillow, like the Zestimate for it was like nine point eight million. Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, this is like a man. He was just Fuck boy, like. Yeah, I mean, he was messing with me the whole time. I mean, <laughs> he funny. was just like, yeah, and and you get that. I mean, no matter yeah. what form of marketing you do, yeah, they're, they're gonna come. Right, Jessica asks, when cold calling, what is the best thing to say when leaving a voicemail? Uh, we actually don't leave voicemails um, when we cold call because it kind of blows our cover with the pitch. Um, so we don't leave voicemails. So you roll it back into the list and eventually you just keep calling them until you get a hold of them? Yeah, um, we do RVMs, it's a little bit different, but um, with cold calling we don't leave voicemails. So you, so you do ringless voicemails, mm -hmm. are you also doing text blasting? No, not yet. So you do the ringless voicemails. What kind of voicemail are you leaving on those? Yeah, so we have a woman on the phone, um, and people feel more comfortable talking to women. So um, it's like, hey, my friend said that you might be interested in selling one of your properties. Um, I mean, we buy properties for cash. We can close pretty quickly. If you have an interest of selling one of your properties, just give us a call back. Pretty simple. Cool. And then run it through the system and then see what happens. Are you seeing, when you drop those, are you seeing just a massive influx of calls back? Um, well, we have it kind of filtered through our call rail, so it's like, hey, if you want to be deleted from the list, press 2. If you want to uh, get forwarded to one of our home advisors, press 1. So it kind of filters it out a little bit, and then our VAs answer it, and then they filter it again, and then they just send the good leads over to our podio. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Matt Smith asks, what do you think is the best way to get cash buyers? Um, cash buyers, I mean, in Dallas, obviously, Facebook and Craigslist works really good. Um, cash buyers in other markets, Craigslist, Facebook. Um, do you do bandit like signs that. to get cash buyers as well? No, we should, actually. Um, I haven't thought of that, no, but sometimes we do get cash buyers that call the signs, but they don't pay top dollar like. Another thing to do is sell. have your dispositions people drop a couple of bandit signs around the properties that you have under contract. They're going to be going out there anyways to show the property and actually do their dispositions yeah. duties. I like that. And then at that point in time, once the property sold, you can pick those up so you're not just leaving them. But what you will do in the meantime while you're trying to get rid of the property is it's accumulate quick. some phone that's calls. Close. You might even sell the property to somebody who sees your bandit sign. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, a unique way to do it as well. Yeah. Um, so going back to the cold calling, you said in South Florida you're actually having a cold call to try to build a cash buyer's list yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. How are, are you targeting people that have actually bought properties for cash and that's who you're calling or how are you doing that to find those cash um, buyers? So we, we target agents on MLS um, that actually listed flips in the past. Um, so we'll go out miles in, in radius around the, our, our deals and then our VAs kind of find their phone numbers on the MLS. Um, and then we essentially put them in the triple dialer and, and, and cold call them. So that's gotcha. kind of how we do it. So we got a question here. What tactics do you use to get the best price drops with sellers off of their asking price? Um, I would go back to the construction side of it. Um, there's obviously a ton of ways where you can negotiate even more just based off of the inspection period. Um, through our pitch, we have uh, about four or five price drops through the entire trans uh, or since when, when we first get the lead to when we're selling the deal. So we price drop a few times and we kind of prepare the seller for that, um, especially since we're not seeing it physically before we put in our contract. So it allows us to go in and, and do another price drop uh, multiple times um, with the inspection period happening. Yeah. Another, another thing about that is, is just being transparent with the numbers yep. as well. I mean, yep. if you just explain to them like, hey, this is what we're seeing, can't sell the property with this flooring or this yep. bathroom or this countertop in the kitchen. Yep. This is what it costs. This yep. is proof. This is this is like my experience of these types of properties. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen, the sellers actually respect that. Yeah, for sure. And especially if they trust you, and that comes with building the relationship with them. Um, and they trust you, and then you tell them it's like, hey, like I mean, the foundation's messed up. We're gonna have to come in, put X amount of piers in. We're gonna have to p fix the plumbing under the house. We might have to replace the whole plumbing system. Whatever uh, that I mean, essentially, we kind of take what our buyers tell us. Right. When they go walk through the property and just bring it back to the seller. Absolutely. Um, so the your buyers will actually tell you how to price drop. Right. It's the easiest way to do it. So Brian Rockwell asks, are you enjoying wholesaling more than rehabbing? Um, yeah, I, I do. Uh, I, I mean, it's obviously a lot easier. Um, I still find a lot of joy out of, you know, taking something and making it better for sure. Um, so, I mean, there's perks to both sides, but I, I enjoy wholesaling a little bit better just because obviously there's no risk and it's a lot, you get paid a lot faster. So, right. um, a lot less work too. So. I think it also just, if, 
it depends on your personality as like the business owner and entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know some people that despise wholesaling. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just, it's not something that they want to be involved in. There's, there's a small amount of control when you're wholesaling. Yeah. Like you're always in the, the motivated seller's hands and you're always yeah. in the cash buyer's hands. You yep. can't really make anything happen there. Yeah. So for some people, it's it just depends on what's best for you. Exactly, you know? yeah. Uh, I mean, I find perks behind both of them, but I think doing both of them is, is super effective when you go back to the wholesaling side because you're actually buying the house physically too. And that's the way we look at it when we, when we pick up contracts. So. Um, we can understand it from the buyer's approach because we are the buyer as well. So, so we got a yeah. subtle plug for Propelio. Oh, it, yeah. it sounds like <laughs> you're investing in all areas that Propelio services are in. No, that's true. Is, is, it's is, true. Is Propelio something that you utilize in your business or have Absolutely. used in the past? Yeah. Um, so we have about eight acquisition guys through the company and they all use Propelio. And so um, are you using that for list and the MLS comps? Just MLS, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So you build your own list mm -hmm. outside of that and then when they're on the phone. So let's walk through that. So you're making offers right there on the phone. Over the phone, yeah. So the call comes in, you're getting information about the property. Yep. Are they on Propelio pulling a CMA right there on yep. the phone? They're copy and pasting it into Propelio and then we, we uh, comp it out and then we're making um, offers of the phone. But it, I mean, we have MLS access in, in the markets that we're in, but Propelio just is obviously a lot easier. It um, is. Yeah, it okay. does the math for you. So, I mean, we just type the ARV back into our Podio system and it, it generates what we can offer them, so. So Mario simple. asked, do you target private money in the specific area that you're buying? Um, private money in the sense of like, I mean, do we need funds? I'm assuming yeah. like if you wanted to buy a property in San Antonio, mm -hmm. are you targeting private money lenders in San Antonio? No, not necessarily. Um, well, I guess I've kind of raised private capital through the past couple of years, so we don't really have an issue um, with private money and they can kind of invest in It doesn't matter we, where the yeah. deal is, they're fine If it's it. a deal, yeah, right. they, they trust me, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they, the deal with private money is, is yes, yeah, sometimes people are, they care about where the deal is. Yeah. But if you have a proven track record yeah. in the market, they don't really. Yeah, so like one of, one of our main lenders um, only likes to lend in Texas, um, which is understandable, but we have other lenders that'll lend pretty much anywhere. So we have the track record, we have like HUDs to, to kind of prove profitability so it makes them feel more comfortable. And we do honestly have experience, so it's not, it's not difficult for us to, gotcha. to get private money. So we got a question on here. I know I asked you this at the beginning, but for the people that join us late, do you still hand write your bandit signs? No, 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 we don't. I, I don't even see, I mean, we or, I order it from the internet and I never see the signs, so, I mean, yeah. And what do your signs specifically say, do you know? We buy houses. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I put a girl's name underneath um, and it makes people feel more comfortable obviously versus like, hey, call me, I'm an, a shark investor and I'm here to take your house. You know, it's like, hey, I Do you understand you change the name? Yeah, you here and there. It. I mean, once a month we kind of change the girl's name. We might do Alex, we might do Michelle, we might do Maria. Do they ever want to know like where the hell Michelle is? Yeah, they'll call, it's like, hey, I need to talk to Michelle. It's like, Michelle's off today. How could I help you? <laughs> it's pretty simple. That's awesome. Yeah. Daniela asks, what are you doing right now to prepare for a market change? Um, so we are actually buying cheaper and selling cheaper. So uh, with real estate, it's always going to evaluate at a certain number and there's always going to be somebody in the market to buy. So um, as the market shifts, we shift with the market. So if we have to buy cheaper, then that's what we're going to do. If we have to sell cheaper, then obviously we have to sell Absolutely. cheaper. Absolutely. And I think yeah. everybody right now is talking about the market shift. Yeah. But this is to be expected, mm -hmm. right? I mean, for the past couple of years, everybody should have known this was eventually oh, yeah, going to come. Yep. And yeah, you're absolutely right. We, we have to now adjust how we're buying. Yep. As wholesalers, we have to adjust to that so we continue to be able to sell and exactly. move our properties. Yep. Uh, but this is only going to open up more opportunities absolutely. for us as investors. Yeah, and, and I've been kind of waiting for a market correction to happen for a long time just because it's just like sellers for one are spoiled. Um, they know they can, well, I don't need to sell right now and when I am, it'll sell overnight. Right. And now we're experiencing like, hey, I can't really sell. Um, and it allows us to, to get it at a better price and um, get more inventory. So. Right, I mean, we had Nicole Espinosa on here a couple of weeks ago. She was mm -hmm. talking about short sales are going up. Yeah. We've had Elizabeth Austin on here, who's a, a retail 
agent rock star. Yeah. Um, days on markets going up. I mean, yep. it's definitely happening. Yeah. And so we're going to see more opportunities coming Absolutely. with the motivated sellers. For sure. Yeah. So we're going to jump to a quick break and go to commercial here. Uh, please keep the Q&A coming and we'll be right back after these messages. All right, guys, thank you for joining us today on Titanium Tuesdays. We've had a bunch of really great questions for Donovan. Uh, Donovan is investing in wholesaling and rehabbing in Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio, and also in South Florida. Uh, he's got tons of knowledge, so please drop your questions that you have for him in the comments. Um, you know, we were just discussing, you know, the change in the market and yep. what that looks like moving forward into 2019. And, and we we're discussing that it's gonna open up opportunities for us as wholesalers and investors to get cheaper yep. deals. Mm -hmm. um, when, what are you doing within your team to kind of coach your acquisitions people? Yeah. Are they also in charge of dispositions? Um, so I actually have a disposition team and I have an acquisition team. Um, when it comes to both angles, our, we've already adjusted our, where our max acceptable offers can be. Gotcha. Um, we, we drop it, well I've been kind of like dropping it a percentage like every week. Um, because, I mean, we ha we're getting a lot of inventory right now, which means we have to sell it a little bit cheaper um, than what buyers are normally used to paying in the past. I mean, and is that like something that you're having like weekly team meetings yeah, and you're every like single openly week. discussing yeah. that, like, hey, yeah. if it was, you know, this percent, we got to go down, we got to get it at yeah. a 2% cheaper discount right. or something. Well, I, I guess I, I kind of feel blessed because I came into the market like when it was its hottest, but I was trained to, hey, you have to sell a deal at like 70%, right? Right. And I didn't realize that that buyers are paying 85% at the time. So right. I know for a fact that like when it comes to sellers, um, they're, they're, they're approaching you because they want to get out of a situation and um, you're here to give them value because you can help them get out of that situation, but you have to be realistic with them. It's like, I mean, you, you essentially have to, to, to give them a, a smaller offer with the, with the market correction. I think one of the things right. what we're going to see here in the next 12 to 18 months mm -hmm. and what's going to differentiate a lot of companies yeah. is going to be your ability to, to actually solve problems yep, for on sure. these. Yep. Not just go in and say, here's the offer, yep. you're throwing it out there and you're trying to get a small assignment fee. That has worked over the past couple of years because you were, like you said, people were willing to buy 85%. Yep. So yeah, it was easy to go lock something up at 80, 82% yep. because you knew you yep. could go out. And resell well, it, yep. What's gonna have to happen now is you're gonna have to actually explain the process, yep. tap into the pain points, find the, find the motivation there. Yeah. And, and there's gonna be some pretty serious motivation coming up here because people are gonna fall yep. into pre-foreclosure, short sale situations, yeah. things along those lines. So the, the acquisitions and the sell side of things is really, yeah. that's what's gonna differentiate companies in my opinion. Yeah, so we're, we're already preparing for that. Um, we, we coach our team every week on what the market correction looks like. Um, obviously we're buying at a certain percentage less, um, but at the same time we're preparing to, to come in and start doing wraps and owner finance as well. Right. So, yeah. and the other thing that you have to think about is, is also as a wholesaler specifically, Yeah you are now going to have to do a better job of locating cash buyers yep. mm -hmm. because there's going to be fewer yep. and less serious people mm -hmm. in this market because there's going to be a lot of people right now that have been dabbling yeah they're going to be like oh this is scarier yeah. than it was 12 months ago yeah i don't want to be involved anymore yep. so wholesaling is also going to get a little bit harder yep. i think everybody right now is thinking like oh, let's just go full-time wholesaling yeah like it's going to be 2015 all over again yeah it's not yep. i mean it's going to be harder to dispose of properties absolutely nicole espinoza asked do you only do bandit signs or do you do any other type of direct marketing so we, we essentially do like all forms of marketing that you can possibly think of all the way from ppc uh, mailers to cold calling to rvms um, and new ones like text boss, but we don't do text boss yet, bandit signs. So we talked um, about the, the three of those. We haven't talked about PPC. Mm -hmm. Is that something you're doing internal or are you outsourcing that to a company? Yeah, I outsource that, yeah. And what is the reasoning behind that? Is that just something like 
that's a distraction, don't want to be involved in it, and you feel more comfortable with someone else? Yeah, it's like, I mean, for one, it's like I have a lot of things that I'm focused on, and I know if I go in and study that, in which eventually I will. Right. Um, it's just I'm not the best at it, and obviously if we're going to dump a lot of money into something, I want to kind of put it with a team that kind of understands how to do it. Um, so I'd rather pay a premium, you know, and kind of pay somebody to do that for me. Right. Yeah. Dante asks, what website do you use for Bandit Signs? Uh, DirtCheapSigns.com. Is yeah. that that's the best? I, I don't, I mean, that's all I've been using. I, like, I've seen other sites that you can get it a little cheaper, but, I mean, that's what I've been using since I've started. and it, They've been good to me, so um, a couple pennies per sign doesn't make a difference for right. my business. So. so Jeremiah's got a question here. He says, you talk about reverse engineer the county for what sells the best. How do you do this? Um, you kind of, well, we do a little bit of market research, so like we go in and try to find uh, where the most cash transactions are happening, um, and we go into those markets and uh, locate, I mean, or we're still on the, like the acquisition side, um, and then we essentially don't bait and switch people, we just bait and switch people, or we bait and sell people, you know, on right. deals, so I guess people train it a little bit different, they go into a market and find, have buyers first. Um, we go in with, with no condom on <laughs> and just, uh, and we fire and then aim. That's kind of our approach. And yeah, it might be a little bit more expensive, but it's been working for us. So Ryan, can that be the title of today's episode? Going with no condom on. <laughs> yeah. See what happens. <laughs> Dante also asks, how do you pay your team? So let's talk yeah. about, you, you kind of already gone over the bandit sign. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about acquisitions in this position. Yeah, so acquisitions, we pay them in tiers. Um, they get a, a small draw of about uh, $2,000 a month. Um, and then they make a percentage, 8% uh, under 50,000 in gross. They make 10% above 50,000 in gross. And then if they do over 100,000 in gross for the month, then they'll get 12%. Um, and then obviously if they find their own deals, then they get 20%. Um, disposition makes about 3%. So gotcha. um, I also have transaction coordinator. Um, I have cold callers. Cold callers, I pay them like 12 bucks an hour. Um, I outsource it pretty cheap, but I mean, there's, there's a lot of them, so. And the yeah. dispositions people, all they're doing is dispositions? Yeah, that's all they do. And are you helping them build the the buyer's list, yeah. or is it just solely their responsibility? Uh, we, I mean, I obviously have to go in and help. Um, we're seeing we have a lot of inventory right now, so like, the, or, I mean, hey, if you if you do buy fix and flips, <laughs> let let me know, you know, because um, we have a lot of inventory just in Dallas. Uh, but yeah, I, I help give them tools that they need that, to succeed, and I mean, you know, and bring people in that kind of know what they're doing, and 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 we build off of what what's already what's already there, and then. Obviously, with anything, we want more. So we're um, obviously networking, meeting new people, um, and you know, and, and networking. So right. Uh, my my partner here, Jamie, just wrote. Mindset is so key. People say you can't good, get good deals because they don't believe they can. Yeah. And prob solving problems is key. Follow up is key. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, follow up is is massive in this business. Absolutely. Yeah. What pro what systems do you have in place for follow up, and whose responsibility is it on the team for follow up? Yeah. So I actually forgot. I mean, I have a, like a lot of divisions. I have a, a follow up division. They're called lead managers. Um, they actually make 5% on deals and their full-time job is just following up with people. Um, they don't get any new untouched or inbound leads. Um, they actually only call uh, uh, leads that we've already talked to. Um, and if it's in our database for more than uh, three days and nobody's talked to them, then they have the opportunity to reach out to them and, and try to make the cold lead a little bit more warm. Then they toss it back to the acquisition guys, which are the, like the closers. Um, and then obviously they split the difference on, on the commission. So that's gotcha. what's been working for us. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it keeps the acquisition guys motivated. And if you don't close it, then you're going to lose 5% because the lead manager will close it. And I mean, how our, our promotion works in the company. It's like once you close a certain amount of deals and bring in a certain amount of revenue to the company, then you can be an acquisition guy. Right. So, so I've seen, you know, on the acquisition side of things with, if they have three days essentially to follow up, yeah. if they keep doing that and they've done it for 90 days, then the follow up team cannot touch it, right? Um, well, it, cause yeah, you, the team is constantly following up, but in our system, if nobody's contacted that person for more than three days, it automatically gets to, uh, reassigned to a lead manager. And are you using Podio for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Can you go over that deal stretch for your team? Because that was a huge nugget for team building. And I, I wanted to queue up our little... With lead managers and acquisitions? For your follow-up team. 
Yeah, so our follow-up team, they're called lead managers, and we pay them 5% of the deal. Um, so if a lead goes 72 hours and nobody's touched it, um, then it goes to a lead manager, and their job is to essentially do the follow-up and get that person and essentially get the relationship back on the line because 80% of what we do is like relationship. We're relationship building. Uh, that's 80% of the reason why people do deals with us. Um, so we're following up with them, continuing that relationship with the notes, and we're reading personalities. Um, and I mean, we're getting to know people, kids' names, where they went to school, where they're from, what they do for a living, all of that. So when a follow-up manager gets the lead, the notes are already there. And it's like, hey, how, how's, how's like your kids by their specific name? And it's like, holy crap, this person knows me. you know. And then we get them back on the hook and, um, and back into the conversation of them selling their house. So I just realized that we, we repeated that for a second time. Also, we could have a golden nugget picture, a little graph <laughs> on there. <laughs> Uh, oh, wow. This is like the twelfth Titanium Tuesday, and that's the first time we've ever had to do that. Yeah, I'm questioning my ability to get golden nuggets on this episode. Thank you, Ryan, for the golden <laughs> golden nugget. Cool. It was, I didn't know that. I, yeah. I do love it though because I've I've talked to people across the country. I've never heard somebody do that before. Yeah, right? and it, it, it's it, always it, falling. The acquisition on. guys get super pissed. Yeah. It's like holy crap! Like uh, it was a, like a home run lead, and you all of a sudden have to pay a majority of that commission out to a lead manager. Well, so you the, didn't follow up. It's your fault, guys. And nowadays, so. it's so common to automate the follow up. Yeah. Like, okay, we're gonna use Podio, and then we're gonna automate with text messages and ringless voicemails. That's the, great. Yeah, that's it, awesome. it is good, but, but it's mean, nothing more. It, there's nothing like talking to someone, like you said, and reestablishing that relationship and making the cold yeah. lead a warm lead again. Well, I think what a lot of people approach real estate is they don't like. You can use data and have marketing. That's great, but if you're not a salesperson or have a sales team then it's gonna be really tough for you to, to, to structure your business. This is a sales business. This is a people business. Right. Um, we view our office as a sales office. It's sales. Um, and that's just the reality of it. Um, yeah. It's not, I mean, it, I mean, you can do all the marketing in the world. You can do all the data and have computers push emails, but if you can't close a deal, it's gonna be hard for you to make a deal. You know, you need to be a sales person. Personally, uh, for me, I mean, and, and this is something that we're, we're currently adapting with our partnership with Jamie, but we had made the decision at Titanium, we got rid of anything that was automated. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the reason why is because it took the, the power of the person yep. away, and now they're relying on the automatic text yep. that was going to the same person the same way at the same time. I mean, there's so much that as individuals, you can impact, like you said, it sells. Yep. And Selling to me is going to be completely different than selling to someone like Ryan. Yeah. I mean, we have two different personalities, and if you're automating everything and it's sent out the exact same yeah. way, you're taking For away sure. the power of your team. So well, I love what you have set up there. I mean, automation is great. It's awesome, you know, but that should be your marketing division, your right. systems division, you know. Um, I've met a, like thousands of people um, that are just intrigued by real estate, you know, and I used to run a sales company, and when it comes to sales, like, oh, I don't want to be a salesperson. I don't want to be a salesperson, and I'm like, well, th that's that's real estate. That's any right. business, you know. You you need that's a majority of your business. Well, you I know? love so. how you keep referring to it as divisions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I don't think that is a a phrase used commonly enough when you talk about a wholesaling company. Like you're yeah. actually building a business. Yeah, and you it, have it divisions is divisions yeah. within the business. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, anybody can hustle a wholesale deal. Um, Anybody can go out and like if you're a hustler, you can get a deal if you just slap enough shit against the wall, you know, a right. deal will happen. Uh, but if you want to structure a business, um, you have to structure it like a business, you know. And we view wholesaling and real estate as a business, and that's the way we structure it. Absolutely. Um, and if we want to grow it, we have to structure it in a way where we can implement certain things quick, um, and then all of a sudden we can see growth happen. And um, so often yeah. I, I tell people, you know, if you're at the point now where you don't feel like this is important in your business, yeah, you're wrong because what's going to end up happening is is you're going to go out there and hustle yep. for six months, a year, two years, and then you're going to realize because I didn't take care of these things in the beginning and I didn't set up these divisions and plans for how I want yep. to set up the business, I've actually let, left a ton of meat on the bone. Yep. I've missed out on deals. Deals fall through the cracks. Right. So you know. set up your business the way you want it to function moving forward in the future. Yeah. Don't set up yourself for failure and create bad habits. Yeah. Uh, we got a question here. Uh, this looks very specific to something that yeah, I guess you moved. How did you get those new builds at a wholesale price? 
the ones that were just built this year? Um, well, this was a, a, an interesting situation. Do you um, currently have these for sale, or is this we, something we just sold? sold. Actually, just we sold. sold it yesterday. Um, Paul actually bought them, but uh, it was one. Uh, but yeah, the we got it. It was a bandit on lean actually. Um, she first called us and she wanted to sell it for like two hundred and fifteen, which was like retail. I'm like, we see how listed. There's, I mean, we're not even consider it, you know, and then. Follow-up manager kicked in, um, reached out to her and, and gave her our max acceptable offer and we keep them low. It's like the lowest number that's on our system, that's what you offer. Um, and our lead managers essentially train our sellers to realize that, hey, nobody else is giving me a higher offer. Then all of a sudden, once we realize, we, we feel that they're coming down on the price a little bit, gets kicked to acquisition manager and then we were able to get it at, at, at wholesale price. Cool. So. So Jessica asks, what are some extra problems you've had to solve for the seller aside from cash needs in order to get the deal? Yeah, so I mean, think about it. It's, it's a person. It's like literally just like you're a person, that person's a person. So it might not just be cash. They just want to maybe move to a different state or they want to move somewhere different. They don't want to keep up with the, like they're, they're set financially. They just don't want to go through the stress of fixing their house or whatever the situation they're in, you have to understand that. I mean, think about it. If, if all of a person thinks about was money and you talk to them and they're not focused on making money at that specific time, you realize their entire life doesn't revolve around money, you right. know? Um, so you have to be able to go in and problem solve for the seller. And yeah, there's not one specific model or system because everybody's different. Everybody has different situations. There's, I mean, like I could think of like 2000 problems I have, you know, right. it, it, you have to go in there and like listen to people, you know, listen to what they're saying in their situation that they're in and help them. It's like, hey, we can help you with moving assistance. We can get professional movers um, and help with those costs or, or, or whatever. Whatever you got to do to essentially add value to that person to get the deal done, do it. I so. mean, so often these motivations might start with a financial reason, mm -hmm. but when you really ask questions and dig deeper, what you find out is, is my good buddies, uh, Jordan Stanley Payne and Todd Fleming, yeah. love them, love what they're doing with the kingdom. Uh, they always say this, they post it on Facebook, money isn't real. Yeah. Like, and it really isn't when yeah. you think about it. It's just something that we trade to get other items. Mm -hmm. And when you look at, you know, so often with a motivated seller, um, I, I can think of specific instances where it was, yes, they needed to sell their house because the initial reason was financially, they couldn't afford the house anymore. But the real reason was is health reasons, lost job, needed to move, grandkids, something happened with their daughter or their son that they needed to move and be there for them. And so what it really comes down to is the initial reason was financially, but it's because of, I need to move to be closer to my daughter yep. or son. Yep. And why I'm saying it's financial is because I have this huge burden yeah. this liability with a property. Yeah. And so you're really not solving that financial burden. You're saying, let me find a way to get you moved to where you can take exactly. care of your son or daughter yep. and take this liability off your hands. Yep. Um, the, it's just, it's a matter of how you phrase things and ask continued questions. That's why having a division like sales mm -hmm. and having good acquisitions people, and even on the disposition side, having good dispositions people that are finding solutions for the cash buyers. Yep. I mean, it's across the board. Yep. It's just about solving problems. Uh, we got our good buddy, Doc Dirt Guy Robinson, watching from the skid steer and finishing a 180 by 300 pad. <laughs> Hashtag no excuse it, for education, Hustling. man. Thank you for tuning in. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and, it's uh, like, I mean, when I was starting in business, man, I used to listen to podcasts while I'm like at work, you know, so um, learn. And I'm gonna give a, a quick shout out to Doc and, and his dad. Um, so often I have used this platform and other platforms to talk about beat kids cancer. And I thank, you know, Propelio and everybody for allowing us to do it. But Doc has a great nonprofit as well um, that right now is currently, this is their time of the season. Um, and I don't know the name of it, but essentially what it is is Santa's Causes. So, so Doc's dad essentially dresses up as, as Santa Claus uh -huh. and, and they, they provide meals, That's food, awesome. toys, clothing for families. And uh, it's just a great cause. Doc, if you, have a t if you have time, can you drop a link in there to uh, y'all's 
uh, website and what y'all's cause is. Um, I just love what you guys do, and y'all have been a huge supporter of us at Beat Kids Cancer. So just want to give that quick shout out to you guys. That's awesome. Um, transitioning from that, let me find an, a good transition from going from the Santa Claus uh, <laughs> it's uh, kind of hard, hard nonprofit, but getting back to real estate Let's investing. go back to the savage conversation. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back. We, uh, we actually had a meeting about that yesterday as a team. It's like, hey, we, we're we making a ton of money. It's like, let's go off 2018 with a, with a different purpose. You know, like how can we give back, not just education wise, but how can we give back to, to people in need, you know? So yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, so we're, it is, man. we're starting a division, a charity division. That's cool, man. And, and yeah. I'm proud of you for that because it's one of the things, obviously, you know, we did that with Beat Kids Cancer and that was something close to our hearts yeah. because, of, awesome. because of my niece. But I, I challenge everybody, once you reach a certain level of success, find something to go out there yeah. and do it because, man, I'm telling you what, for every deal that I've ever wholesaled or flipped and, and big checks or great months or anything like that, nothing compares to yeah. being able to give back and, and get messages and pictures. And, yeah. you know, yesterday we, we dropped off a ton of toys and stuff like that at Cook's Children's. And my kids, awesome. my kids actually did it and I got sent a picture. And I, awesome. I was having a pretty rough day at that, that, mo that moment and I got that picture and it's like, man, there's just nothing better than seeing yeah. my little kiddos dropping off kids for, for the sick kids. So. Absolutely. Anyways, we're going to take a quick break, jump to commercial. Let's uh, get some more uh, Q&A in there. And we got about 10 or 15 more minutes with Donovan. Thank you, guys. guys thank you for joining us on titanium tuesdays today i uh, hope you guys have loved today's episode uh, donovan has just been uh, dropping a ton of golden nuggets actually he officially dropped the first golden nugget on titanium Tuesday. really i mean awesome yeah, i mean it was the first yeah that it was the first first time we've gotten that golden nugget so uh but we're we got about 10 15 more minutes with donovan love to get y'all's questions in there so the more we can get in, the better. Uh, the first one we've got here, what are some of the best training slash masterminds that helped you scale? Yeah, so um, actually you know them. Um, Carlos and Sal in Phoenix, they, they host an all-in event, yep. um, like once a quarter, something like that. That's helped a lot. Um, there's a, a few other like high-paid uh, masterminds that I was a part of, um, which is like kind of expensive. It's like 30 or 40,000 per, per event. So. Um, I mean, you can hit my DMs, and um, if that's something that you're interested in, I can see if we can um, get you into that mastermind. Yeah, so real quick, I know quite a few of my buddies that have masterminds. Um, just I'm going to drop their names because I don't necessarily know the name of the mastermind itself, but uh, Brad Chandler, Joe Evangelisti, Tim Bratz, uh, Todd Fleming and Jordan Stanley Payne, Carlos and, and Sal, like you said. Yeah. Um, Mike Hambright with Investor Fuel. Those are some of the, the best masterminds out. Mark Evans DM as well. So Thank you. check those out. Those are some great masterminds. I think masterminds are huge for success. Um, obviously, you know, with partnering with Jamie, we just started our own. And, and that's what I've been telling everybody in there about, you know, I can go back and directly correlate some of our success to yep. expanding to new markets. Almost all of the private money we've ever raised has been from masterminds. Yeah. Which sounds crazy, but I've told people I'm like, well, the reason why is is you've got people in a in a mastermind with people from all across the different levels of business. Yeah. And there are people in there that are like, hey, I've I've been in this game for 15, 20 years, and I no longer want to do be the operator. Yeah. So it allows you to network with great people. So good yeah. question there. Uh, Jeremiah says, what books do you recommend for real estate and or business? Um, I haven't read a, a lot of real estate books just because a lot of them, they're written like a specific time or a market. So it's kind of hard to like find certain things um, that work. But business wise, I think Traction is a, a great book. Yes. Um, I always recommend, I mean, especially if you want to scale your business, I read, read Traction. Um, I mean, obviously there's a, a couple of like mindset books like Think and Grow Rich, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, it helps with the sales side. Um, but yeah, understanding, I mean, 
you, you, I always recommend like, hey, I mean, go get a sales job for a couple months or a year or something like that and learn how to actually physically do sales. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what's helped dramatically in my business because I've ran um, uh, or I've owned a sales business um, for years and it's literally just a business. Right. Know, so. I think um, since we've talked a little bit about um, negotiations, never split the difference is a good mm -hmm. one. Uh, I definitely second um, traction mm -hmm. as far as building out systems and really breaks down how the CEO is the visionary and the COO is the integrator and what that means. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, let's talk about that for a second because it sounds like, you know, with your divisions and, and you building out your team, yeah. I mean, that's really impressive. Yeah. Are you by yourself? Have you, how have you come up with the systems and the processes in your business and do you have support in that regard? Um, well, it's it's funny, it's because I actually uh, posted this, like CEOs, like LLC owners, um, entrepreneurs, I feel that's really saturated. Anybody could go to the county or the state and just buy an LLC and then you post it on your Instagram, like, oh, I'm not a CEO, right? Right. Um, I mean, how much money are you making? You know, who have you helped in your business? Who have you put on? Um, who have you brought from something and made them better? You know, so I think it's a, it's a lot deeper than hey, you're a CEO and you're all of a sudden entitled. So what I did yesterday, it's like. It, I want to structure it different in our company where I now work in the company with everybody else and it's not to a standpoint of, of pride or anything like that because we're building something together. This is our company um, and I actually moved my office from a private office to the sales floor so I can be in the trenches with those guys, you know. Um, so I have different perspectives on that just because I used to be a CFO at my own company that I owned and I hired a CEO and it worked amazing and great but the problem with that is people are inspired by that and, and when they're inspired by that they just want to go do their own thing and it makes it really difficult to, to retain people so um, instead of um, working it like that I, w I want to be able to work within the company just like everybody else so we can build something together versus something that's just mine. Right. Does that make sense? Um, so. Well, the yeah. other aspect of that is, is I'm sure there was a, a point in time where you actually wanted to do this business because you enjoyed this business, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I love I love real estate. I love business, um, and it's got to the point now where it's not just about money. It's I mean I mean I have made great money and I have like excellent paychecks and stuff like that, but. I mean, it gets to a point where you've bought everything you wanted, you've seen everything that you wanted. Now it's like, all right, what's next? Now my family's even taken care of. Now it's to a point where it's like, let's go out into the trenches and help somebody um, get out of a situation or make their life better. And then all of a sudden, because you're able to do that, people around them are, are better. And right. it's gonna grow to a point where it's like, you're literally impacting um, the world. I mean, look at AT&T, it's one of the biggest companies in the world. and. I mean, I know millionaires that work for AT&T, you know, right. um, but everybody around them, their life is better, you know, just because of a company. Absolutely. So. Well, uh, you know, obviously I, I have a, a lot of different things to say about this, you know, tying back into the masterminds, there's a lot of time where I go to masterminds and the constant conversation in the mastermind is, is how can I systemize my business so I can get out of it? Yeah. Yep. And I'm I like, yeah. and it gets to me and I'm like the weird dude where I'm like, I don't necessarily I want to be out of my yeah. like that's my baby that's what I love like yeah. I I've, I've built this to From be a scratch. part of it and be proud of it and yep. yeah of course I want freedom of time to go on vacations and stuff like that and enjoy yeah. my life yeah. but I don't want to stop working. Yeah, you know? and I, I take the same approach. It's like, how can I um, delete myself from a, an equation so I can do something other right. in, the, in the business, you know, and duplicate myself so I can make it better. Um, and I, I'm motivated, it's like, hey, how can I leverage my time um, not just to retire and stop working, so I can work more. On so I can do something else, else like a yeah. nonprofit, exactly, or, or whatever, or yeah. expand a new market. Yep. I mean, that's one of the, the greatest things that, you know, we've, uh, we've ever been able to do is expand to new markets and find new partners and yep. create that financial freedom for other people as well yep. along with you and mm -hmm. side by side and create that you know army of people yep. and that's why we're we're partnering with different people like jamie and you know it's aligning the 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 forces there and and being able to do more together yep. it's so funny you bring up at&t because uh i think in one of my sales pitches to jamie where i was asking her to partner with us 
I was like, it's kind of like when AT&T and Singular, <laughs> like, remember everybody had the stupid little yeah. Singular cell phones, and I was like, AT&T bought it, and was like, yeah. oh shit, now you, like, yeah. there are no other cell, com- cell phone companies. Yeah, and it just became a whale. And now you look at yeah. AT&T, so. Ryan Harper asks, where did the gong come from? Oh yeah, Amazon, Amazon. So yeah, we have this gong in the office. Every, every time somebody gets a deal, we hit the gong, we all celebrate. Um, Is it a big one? I have not it's, seen it. It's pretty big, yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. Hi. F- follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Or, oh yeah, you can pull it up. Here we See, go. There, there it is. Yep. So every time we get a deal, we, we hit this gong. Um, so yeah. That, oh hell it. no! We're gonna partner on a deal. <laughs> I'm gonna come in there. I'm gonna hit that thing. Let, let's hit it. I ain't gonna hit it like he did. I'm, I'm giving it a good one. It's usually a big, massive celebration in the office because <laughs> it, it, it takes a lot of work. Like my guys work hard. Right. Uh, we work hard to get a deal, you know. And there's a lot of money and there's a lot of individuals that's involved with the whole process to get a deal done. So we celebrate, you know, every Absolutely. time that happens. So I well, it's important. It's like you just brought up. What did you spend last month on marketing? About one hundred forty thousand. One hundred forty thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, by God, when you go <laughs> out and you when I you. I didn't get a call. I spent a hundred dollars on mailers. <laughs> right. I mean, when you go no, out. No, you got it. Yeah. And you get a deal, and then you get rid of it, and like you start. Yes, that is something to celebrate. I For mean, sure. Yeah. And and a lot of people in this business disrespect what wholesalers go through yeah. to to get deals. I mean. What you are building is an actual legitimate business, yeah. and there's a you're feeding a ton of people, yeah. and not only inside your business but the vendors you're using as well. Yeah, I think uh, our our good buddy uh, Sonia Ray just asked earlier, who are you using for PPC? I think that's important because obviously it's working for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you mind sharing who you're using for that? Um, yeah, you can just reach out to Carlson Sal; they can help you. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Randy, yeah. Randy McFeely says, uh, you don't build a business, you build people, people build the business. Exactly, yeah, I mean, I, even on the construction side of rehabs, like I took my carpet guy and he only did carpet when I met him. And now he does a majority of a lot of miscellaneous things with, with, with the job. And he didn't even believe he could do it. I'm like, dude, like it's carpentry. Like you can, you have the tools to do something more, you know, and you just develop people. And as long as you're developing people, you know, you're always gonna um, see growth, uh, especially if you bring value in return. But yeah, I mean, back to the buyers. I, for sure, it's like, I mean, me as a buyer, like I used to only buy from wholesalers. Right. Um, like last year, I I mean, I would probably average $100,000 that I was paying wholesalers to find deals by just doing rehabs. Um, so I kind of looked at that, I was like, man, I could continue to buy from wholesalers, not come out of pocket because I use private money and stuff like that, or I could just find my own deals with the room payment assignments. That's kind of why I like don't have an issue of spending a lot of money on marketing. But yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like changing the whole dynamic of um, buyers coming in buying our deals because I understand where they're coming from. You know, they want the best deal and they don't want to pay like w- whatever. But I literally invite them to the office. I'm like, hey man, come see the operation. Come drop the earnest money off, and we can kind of show you what other deals that we have, so they can kind of see what's going on and what processes that we see. So it's not like, hey, this is um, a hustle, like a hustler hustled a wholesale right. deal and it's going to hustle me. It's not like that. It's like a legitimate business um, that we bring legitimate value in on both angles, the seller and the buyer side, right. you know? Um, so it's even sellers, they come to the office, come check out our operation. Um, this is a business, like it's kind of like a corporate structure and there's like a closing room with, I mean, I mean, like they're our clients, you know, right. we need them just as much as they need us. So, I love that, man. Yeah. And you know, we, in, in the newer markets that we go to, we buy quite a bit of our deals from wholesalers. Mm-hmm. I've yet to see when we buy multiple deals from a wholesaler where it just ends at that, where we're the cash buyer and they're the wholesaler. Yeah. There's so much opportunity to do yeah. more together. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, shout out to my buddy Colby K in, in Phoenix. Um, we bought some deals from him. He's also found ways to bring us lenders so we could close on different deals. Mm-hmm. Now we have deals that we're, we've gotten under contract or we own that we want to dispose of. So he's going to do a dispositions for us. Next thing you know, it's like he's, he's got a, a great deal in Louisiana right now, um, a, a mobile home part that he's looking to get rid of. He's reaching out to yep. us and Corey Thompson. I mean, there's just, when you have that abundance mindset, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's like the relationships start to flourish. Yeah. And then it's like, are we partners 
no, mm -hmm. but we're partnering on different ways to absolutely. make money together. Yeah. And there's so much power in doing that. Yeah. And so, yes, you're absolutely right. When you wholesale a property and you bring in that cash buyer to your operation and let them see all that, mm -hmm. yeah, it's way different than just signing an assignment contract and giving you a $5,000 cashier's check. Exactly. They're seeing, hey, there's something to grow here. I yeah. can get excited about this. Yeah. Donovan, this is what I want. These are the types of deals I want. Yeah, we get their criteria and like we like I like hey, like what's your criteria? We get criteria from everybody and then we literally dedicate like if they hand us a check, I'm like, hey, you're doing business with us now. We're gonna literally reinvest this back into the system where you want to buy so we can help you get more deals. Right. Um, so develop those relationships with your cash buyers because that's super important. As markets change, you can't just like fire sell stuff just because you have it. Right. Um, you have to kind of build it off of uh, your client base, you know, what people want right now. So, so uh, your fellow Titanium Tuesday previous guest, Greg Shine, says he's totally <laughs> ordering a gong today. But I'm going to keep it around the house and use it every time I actually wash dishes, fold clothes, etc. Yeah. Is that is awesome. That's funny. That's By awesome. the way, I, I'm stealing Greg Shine's wardrobe. I, I love his wardrobe more than anything. And he stole like the whole Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg theory of like he wears the same thing every day. <laughs> and so I'm I, like, I, I love actually it. got accustomed to that, man. It's like I wear normally I wear like a T-shirt and jeans. I don't have to think about what I wear, you know. So I have a lot of things to think about. I don't want to wake up with a problem. I'm like, what am I going to wear today? I already know what I'm going to wear today. It's right. jeans and a T-shirt. I think I this have is other like problems to solve. These now. are all like uh, entrepreneur little idiosyncrasies yeah. that we come up with. Where yeah. all of a sudden it's like. I wasted three and a half minutes a day wondering what I was going to wear. Yeah. Must cut that from <laughs> my life. Yeah. So Jamie says 140000 on marketing. What is your return and gross profit for this? Must know. Uh, um, we do, we, it's, it's about 30 per, 36%. Um, I, so yeah, I guess you can kind of do the math. Yeah, you can, you so, can do the math, Jamie. If not, like you can text me after the profit. show and I'll do the math for you, partner. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what takes the Jeremiah, biggest chunk? Where does the 140k go to? What takes the biggest chunk? Um, I'm sure PPC is a lot of that, right? Uh, well, I think uh, that's. I mean, it, I mean, we pay our team commissions. You know, it, right. I think that's where the majority of it goes. Um, but we spend a lot like on data within itself because we buy entire like counties. Um, we buy like millions of records at a time. Um, skip tracing it, um, filtering it, and stuff like that, and then filtering it through the the BAs. It, it's it's kind of expensive. So, so real quick before we jump off, um, you have another company outside of real estate investing. I actually shut it down. Yeah, you shut it down. Yeah, I was kind of I did own the like I had two million dollar companies. Was like fine and dandy, um, which is it was a cool experience um, because I've I've learned a lot from both. But I kind of grew to the point where it's like I felt not only did I have two roles and two jobs, but I was giving my people 50% on both sides. And I kind of came to an understanding where I wanted to just give everybody 100%. So I just kind of made the decision to just go all real estate and kind of took some of my, my top guys from my sales company and brought them over to the acquisition side. And, um, and now we focus only on real estate. It's so, crazy, man. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of guts to shut down a seven figure business. Yeah, it's, it's super humbling. Um, and it, I mean, I, I learned a lot from that and our clients treated us really well. Uh, but I think for the, for the better of my, our, my people, um, I think it's what made sense. Um, cause I want to like, it's m not about money anymore. You know, right. it's not about growing a, a super successful company. It's about the people. It's about my people. So it's awesome, um, man. So yeah. for everybody that's watching, if they want to do business with you, what's the best way they can reach out to you and do business with you? Yeah. So you can, uh, reach me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, I'm sure you guys will tag it and, and my email, you can email me. Um, I, I don't really give out my phone number that much anymore just because I get a lot of phone calls and I have a lot of responsibilities. Um, but most definitely you can email me, um, Donovan at equitycashoffer.com. Find me on Facebook, Donovan Ruffin, um, Instagram, the Donovan Ruffin. Um, Instagram is probably the easiest way just because I'm always on there. Um, I'm always distracted, right? But I get a lot of inspiration from Instagram, you know? Um, I see like celebrities and other people um, doing certain things and I'm like, see, it's like if that person can do it, so can I, you right. know? So I like, I like Instagram, so. So you're gonna have your dispositions guys drop those deals you got under contract in the, in the comments? Yeah, um, Quinn. Let's make it, um, let's make Quinn's, a deal. Let's, let's, let's make let's, a deal go down on Titanium yeah, I got, Tuesdays. I mean, dude, we have like just between Dallas and Fort 
Fort Worth, like deals ready to go. We have about 20 deals. Um, let's do it. Like, we have let's like get some, 43 let's get some deals. deals. Sold. We're just waiting for pictures and titles to clear. So we're picking up a lot of deals. Um, we're selling them like 75, 76% right now. So um, we have a lot of inventory. So you can come shop. Come shop, come shop with us. <laughs> um, it's cool. I'll expect sure. my 3% commission. It's only 3%? That's what you said, disposition. Oh, yeah. I I pay 3%. 3%. I'll pay 3%. (laughs) All right, guys. So I'm RJ Bates, Titanium Investments, uh, same thing. Um, You can find me on Facebook. um, And also, I I don't do this good enough on here. We buy houses. We also sell houses as well. So please reach out to me. Um, And then also, guys, uh, shout out and love for Propelio. Without them, none of this is possible. Um, definitely use them for MLS comps. We, both Titanium Investments and Donovan's company, we use them for our comps. Yep. Uh, but they also have lead lists, they also have websites, and all kinds of other things uh, through their subscription. So check them out at Propelio.com. And then also, uh, please subscribe and turn the notifications on on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and uh, check out the other shows. We got uh, Grant Teach Me Something tomorrow. Then we got the Iron Heel show on Thursday, and then do we have Quest on Friday. Um, great information there. Each one of these uh, shows brings a little bit different taste and flavor to it, uh, but all great content. So thank you guys for watching, and are we still doing shows next week, or when are we taking next off for week, Christmas? Yeah. So next week will be our last week before the Christmas break. So we got one more week for you guys, so we'll see you all next Tuesday, okay?